Hi everyone, my name is Antonin and I will present today how to control two three-phase brushless motors using one F28269 launchpad. There is a prerequisite to better understand this example. I strongly recommend you watch the video entitled Simulink Motor Control with TI Launchpad. This uh, previous video is controlling one motor with a F28027 launch pad. I strongly recommend you go through this video as it will explain how to install the support packages needed for um, this particular example. So here is the list of hardware required for this demo. You need an F28069 launch pad. You need two Boost XL DRV8301 booster packs. Uh, note that the F28069 launchpad can take two booster packs at the same time and these are the inverters so we're going to use one for each motor and you need of course two uh, PMSM three-phase motors. There is a packaged mini dyno kit that you can get from TI. This is the product code 2MTR-Dyno or you can use any two PMSM motors that may be shipping with other kits. So here is what I have on my table. This is my F28069 launchpad. You can see the two slots for the two booster packs. Uh, this is my first booster pack, which is connected here to this motor. Uh, there are a lot of cables here. Uh, these are my QEP and hall sensor cables. They are not connected today because I'm running sensorless. The hall sensors and QEP cable for the second motor and you can see that the second motor is connected to the second booster pack. So I'm going to connect both of them to the F28069 launch pad. There is no dump proof connector so make sure that you connect them correctly. Uh, I have a power supply here uh, it's just a laptop power supply that's not connected right now. That's going to give me 20 volts and I have shared that power supply across the two booster packs. I also have my 5 volt USB cable um, that I can connect to my computer which will power the F28069 launch pad. And installation functions that are good to remember, target installer to install new support packages, target updater to make sure that the third party tools are correctly installed, and check ENV setup. And uh, in this case, it's good to run it against CCSV5 or V6, F28069 check. That's probably the configuration that will be useful today. So let me go to the Simulink model. So here is what I use to control the two motors. I'm just going to generate code and run it and then I will go through explanations on how I got there. So I can press that build button. It will generate code for this model. It will invoke the CCS compiler and it will load the code on the F28069 launchpad that I have connected right now to my USB cable. I haven't connected high power yet. Let's wait until we load the code then we'll, we can start the um, the 20 volt to spin the motors. You can click on the view diagnostic to follow the build steps. Uh, you can see the generated code being compiled. Here we call a scripting tool provided by CCS to load the code onto the target. My debug session is starting. I'm connected to my target and my code is loaded on my target. It's a little hard to see but I have an LED blinking. Um, yeah, you can see it here. It's a blue LED blinking just to see that the code is running properly. All right, so the code is flashed on the target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my USB cable. So now nothing's powered. I'm going to connect my high voltage. I mean, high voltage, it's only 20 volts, but uh, this should spin the motors now. It should boot the code and provide high power at the same time. And now you can see that both motors are spinning uh, on my dyno. You can notice I haven't connected the two motors together. They're just freely spinning right now for the sake of the example. Of course, uh, one thing you can do in the future is connect these two and have one drive the other and have one motor act as a load while the other would be the motor on the test. So how did I get there? So here is my Simulink model. 
One thing very important, always enable colors in your model and if you look at the sample time legend, we have multiple colors here. We have this red RAID group which is running at 50 micro, we have one interrupt which uh, is asynchronous and I can tell you it's running also at 50 micro. So I'm running these two motors at a 20 kilohertz uh, rate. I have a speed control loop every 10 milli, so every 10 milli I'm going to refresh my torque demand to both of these torque control loops for each motor. And I have my LED blank at 0.5, so I'm toggling the LED every 0.5, which gives me a blinking period of one second. So there are a few modeling concepts that I would like to show with this demo. So the first one is the target selection. Make sure you've selected the right target. The F28069 launch pad comes with an F28069M and the M is very important in that case. Uh, it doesn't have the same memory map as the other F28069. So you need to select the C28069M.cmd file. It's not the same linker command file as the regular F28069. The devices are similar, but the IQMath tables are located at a different memory location for the M device. So it's very important that you select that M device, which is provided out of the box. Just press the browse button, and you have all of them provided here the plain 069, the 69F and the 69M. Second modeling concept that I would like to demonstrate is the PWM synchronization. So I have two motors and the first motor is going to be controlled by this side of the model while the second motor is going to be controlled by this side of the model. The two PWMs have to be synchronized. What I do for that is I'm using PWM123 for the first motor and they're triggering ADC A0 and B0 which are sensing my IA and IB for the first motor. I am using PWM456 for the second motor and they're triggering ADC A3 and B3. So now, like I demonstrated before, the PWMs are synchronized. So the first three, one, two, and three, are synchronized together uh, and the counters are just uh, in sync with each other. The way I ensure this is by sending a synchronization pulse between PWM1, 2, and 3. The way you do this is you set here synchronization output and I'm going to send the pulse when the counter equals 0. Okay? So this will send the pulse to PWM2. Now you can see on this first one I'm not reacting on any pulse. Synchronization action is disabled. This is the initiator of the pulse, so it, it's my reference for the synchronization. Now if I go to PWM2, when counter of PWM1 equals 0, it will send the synchronization pulse. PWM2 reacts on it by setting its own counter to 0. In that respect, both of them are synchronized. They're all going to be uh, set to zero at the same time. PWM2 also outputs a synchronization pulse to PWM3, and in that case, it's just a pass-through. We don't want to do anything. PWM1 is eventually going to reach PWM3 via PWM2 with a pass-through here. On PWM3, same as PWM2, I'm going to react on the synchronization pulse by setting a counter phase value to zero. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, once you set this to zero, it has to count up after sync because it's a uh, counting mode is up and down, so when you reach zero, obviously after that you want to count up. This is important. This also has to be set on PWM2. Now, what PWM3 does, in the previous video with the F28027 launchpad, it was just disabling the output because nothing was there after that. Now I have a second motor to synchronize. So here I am passing the synchronization output pulse and this will reach PWM4. So now let's look at what we do with PWM4. PWM4 is for the second motor and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to synchronize the counter of PWM4 to the counter period instead of synchronizing it to zero. 
And when PWM 1, 2, 3 are reaching 0, PWM 4 is reaching the counter period. And you will see that I'm going to do the same with 5 and 6. So 4, 5, 6 are going to be set to the period, while 1, 2, 3 are going to be set to 0. So in that respect, they're dephased by 180 degrees. Same deal, I'm passing the synchronization output pulse as a pass-through, uh, so that will reach PWM5, and PWM5 is going to be the same as PWM4, setting the period uh, when you reach the pulse. And you can notice here the countdown after sync. When we reach the period, we want to count down. And the same, I'm passing the synchronization output, PWM6, is going to be the same with the little difference that there's nobody after that so the synchronization output reaches finally a dead end and it's now disabled. So here is a picture that summarizes what's happening in this model. We have our PWM sync triggering when the PWM1 counter reaches zero and that synchronizes the counters of PWM1, 2 and 3. That PWM sync will also synchronize PWM456 when PWM1 is 0, PWM456 will be set to the counter period and will count down after the synchronization. You can see the ADC triggers happening on the periods of PWM123 as well as the periods of PWM456. The ADC trigger of PWM123 will trigger ADC A0, B0. At the end of the ADC conversion, an interrupt is generated and that will trigger the field-oriented control algorithm for motor 1. When PWM456 reaches the period, ADC trigger number 2 is happening and this will trigger ADC A3 and B3. At the end of the conversion, an interrupt is generated and that will trigger the field-oriented control algorithm for motor number 2. You can notice that the full PWM period is set to 20 kHz or 50 microseconds, so that gives us about 25 microsecond maximum for uh, the ADC conversion and the field or ant control algorithm for each motor. So you can notice that our code is running pretty efficiently as it has to complete within that uh, 25 microsecond and leave enough time for the uh, lowest priority tasks uh, to execute. The last modeling concept I wanted to talk about is the ability to trigger the Simulink scheduler based on an ADC interrupt. If I go back to my model, you may have noticed that I only have one interrupt that's triggering the FOC algorithm for motor number two. I could create the same model with two interrupts, one for motor one, one for motor two. The problem when we use interrupt is you get that purple color and Simulink loses uh, the ability to know that this is a periodic interrupt uh, which is associated with a fixed sample time. We can fix it for at least one interrupt. Uh, if I go to my config set, I have the ability to tell Simulink uh, to trigger the scheduler based on the ADC interrupt instead of the standard timer zero. By default, the scheduler interrupt source is set to timer zero. When we do this, we book CPU timer zero, we set the periodicity of timer zero to the base rate of the Simulink model, and that triggers an interrupt at a fixed interval. That's the red color in my model. Here, I have the ability to say, I have set my ADC interrupt to a specific rate, now, please, Simulink, use that interrupt to schedule the entire scheduler instead of timer zero. And that's what we do here. That offers the ability to keep a known sample time and use blocks that would need that sample time. I'm thinking of blocks like the buffer block, like PID blocks, or any block that would need uh, an input sample time. I hope this gives you a, a good base to start playing with this uh, dual motor control setup. For the future, as enhancements or things uh, you can try, uh, you can try to implement a sensor-based uh, motor control uh, algorithm using either HALS or QEP. Um, to do this, you can type on your MATLAB prompt, there is a standard demo. If you type C28069PMSMFOC, uh, that will help you implement a uh, whole sensor-based uh, uh, position sensing. Um, there are other shipping demos like the C2808 PMSM FOC. Uh, this one will show you how to use 
a QEP uh, to get the, the position of the motor. There are also demos uh, that will show you how to use the CLA. So we can put the FOC algorithm on the CLA and therefore save a lot of CPU time to do some lower priority tasks. The CLA would require a conversion of the algorithm to a floating point. There is a shipping demo that will show you how to use the CLA if you type C28069 just tab it and um, you have C28069 PMSM FOC CLA that will show you how to use the CLA and this CLA demo is also using hall sensors as uh, a position technique. You could also do parameter tuning and data logging via external mode. There is a CAN connector on the F28069 launchpad. You can go through our external mode based on CAN demos to start logging data and tune parameters like PID gains while the motors are spinning. You can type C28X underscore CCP and that is a good starting point for external mode based on CAN. Another good avenue to pursue would be to connect the two motors physically together uh, and start having one acting as a load while you actively test the, the first motor. I hope this helps and I hope this gives you a lot of ideas to try. Thanks for watching.